Ultra Blade is an addition to the survivor-like genre. Its pixel art and take on both horizontal and vertical progression allow the player to feel like after each run you are not too far from the next upgrade. The constant pursuit of ingots to unlock new characters, cores to upgrade pre-existing ones, and keystones to upgrade key skills mid-round make the fight to survive a bit more engaging than just picking up XP. Ultra Blade differs from other survivor likes in that you shouldn't expect to win a particular round. Instead, your focus is on surviving long enough to collect enough resources that subsequent runs can be made easier. This can be done by purchasing one of 29 characters, or blades as the game calls them, each of which can be independently leveled. After leveling them four times, you will have a complete set of gear, which is four starter items, that can range from having orbitals surround your character upon attack, loot be directed toward your character to minimize getting in harm's way, or setting up fire traps that your enemies can walk into. There are several primary archetypes, which include your standard sword characters, archers, mage, lance users, and more. You unlock new levels by making it to at least wave 15 on a set amount of pre-existing levels, each of which have their own modifier to either the player or enemies. There are a couple of things that held the game back from being significantly more enjoyable. The first is a qualm that I have with the general gameplay. I feel like I would have liked to have felt substantially more powerful for runs that I felt like I had survived for quite some time. I felt like there were moments in the mid-game where I felt like I had a build that had some strength to it, but it was quickly overtaken in the incoming wave. I never felt like I was able to do anything spectacular with a particular build, and games like this rely on that feeling. Another thing that was not super clear was the use of the combo meter. I didn't know if the XP that I acquired throughout the run scaled with the combo, or if it was only useful for certain items like the crown. Lastly, I do feel that there were some of the level options that did not really fit what the level was supposed to be centered around. For example, the level that was titled Bow Weapons Only allowed you to use a blade that was not bow specific. The difference between a bow skill or staff skill was a little unclear. A brief disclaimer, I spoke with the developer of the game and was told that the iOS version of the game was the best experience after I had already logged about 4 hours on the Android version. The iOS is a premium title at $2.99 whereas the Android title is free. The developer did say that a premium version of the game is coming to Android in due time. However, I didn't notice a difference between the two versions, but I did feel that it was necessary to mention. I played a total of 12 hours, 4 of which were split between the Android version, and I felt like I still had several levels to unlock and characters left to acquire. The game has enough variety and unlockables to keep fans of the genre engaged. It does not do anything to revolutionize the genre, but it plays to its strengths well. A few UI issues and a bit more dynamic gameplay is what is missing from keeping it from being recognized as a must-own. That being said, at its current price, the barrier of entry is low enough where I would be willing to recommend it if you are not too well versed in the survivor-like genre or if you are a complete fan of it. For a list of the current rankings of games that I played, take a look at the description below. To not miss any future mobile game reviews, be sure to subscribe to Gaming in the Moment.